quite a few of those over the years. The rollers down in here, you always want to make sure they're free to roll. You always want to put a little bit of one in the LPS2 because if those happen to stop rolling, especially going down the compend, that's where it is. This is the master flap. It drives the other flap. If you have a problem with one of the switches, the button comes up and twists the cable. It's creating a bigger problem. So, very minor. If you have a little bit of maintenance, it can solve a big problem. We have a rating issue here. Yeah, your voice can it takes care of it. Right here, you feel, listen to this. That's hitting stop internally. Now we're hitting stop out here. Okay. You should always hit the stop out here first before your control wheel hits internally. Okay. So, I think, um, probably if you get around and look into this, this the situation is, I don't know where this flies. Is it everything pretty well streamlined? Yeah, it's all, it's all very well uh, streamlined. It, the only is somebody's probably adjusted the cables at some point, mm -hmm. and the bell cranks here, and where the if you look in front of your instrument panel, there's like there's, there's a bell crank there that comes out three ways, and then in the, in the center of it is like a, a knee arrangement, symmetry with the torque knees like Kevin here. Mm -hmm. That should be at 12 o'clock. What we're hearing is that it's perhaps over a little bit to the left. It should be. It's, it's a, it should be at 12 o'clock. The handle should be flat. And then all of this should be reached basically level yeah, with the flat. Level with the flat, and, yeah. And there's, there's a belt crank in here, pivots right here. It should be parallel with the grip. And what we've got here is a situation. I think the cable ringing can maybe be a little bit off. It'll fly no differently right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying this doesn't have full travel. It should have more, yeah, it should it should hit here first right. instead of hitting there first, and you can tell that it hits there right. in the cockpit. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You. It okay. Keep going. Should have 20 degrees up travel. Mm -hmm. We're not getting it. Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm losing Actually, speed on my left turns. Is somebody ready this time? Uh, I'm I'm recording it, but oh, I'm, okay. Good. Sorry. I'd rather have it on video and be able to hear every word you say as opposed to uh, copying it down wrong. All right. But I'm going to have to stop and get new batteries for this just a minute. You just tell me when. Some of this we may just write. Okay. Yeah, it just, to me, it's just unbelievable how much. Look at the fuel. It looks like you had one at one time. Mm -hmm. Pretty significant. There's no longer white residue stuff that's left there. Yeah, it's the dye. It's the dye from the fuel. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get off. Yes, it is. Clear. Yeah. It's good rigging. Snug up these hinges. They're not too bad. They're getting a little bit loose. I might maybe just try to take them up just a little bit tighter. The actual cow flap hinges. Right. And, and in reality, you get cotter pin. Somebody's put a cotter pin cast like nuts. If you actually use like a bolt with a self locking nut, it would be a better situation. Okay. Um, that way you can really adjust the tension. You have to go to a castellation. Right, 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 right. Which might limit you to how tight you can get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flaps. Yeah. 
plain as crack can. You don't see that very often anymore with a slip joint. You have a slip joint that makes it all easier. Yeah, it's our cylinder there. Looks good. You have about five minutes. One of the best things you can do for this engine. Can I say that again? Very good baffling. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the best things you can do for the engine. Really. Would you mind speaking for a second about the new uh, number six cylinder vent tube? Which I don't have. What is your feeling on those? Oh, I, yeah. It's, well, number one, how, how's it? How's the cylinder temperature run right now? It's pretty good. It's the warmest. It's the warmest six. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we've seen that where we put them in and it mm -hmm. didn't drop down a few degrees. It's it's about twenty to twenty to thirty degrees hotter than the rest for uh, for most operations. For so CHD. For CHD. So uh, and I've heard that's about what it drops it, which would put it pretty much yeah. within a ten degree window for all of them. Right. But it, no. We we did several in that way, and it, it affected. In fact, we we always ordered it with the bad one. Great props. Let me do some of that. Put some silicone or something in there right now. We're we'll rubbing metal to metal, or you know, shields rubbing on metal there. I'm going to grind the squeeze in or something because it somewhere that's going to wear through for you. Let me have a wrench. A lead that's not going to be working for you. It'll be bad. Shorting. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, you're saying that Presto lights do what? Yeah, these Presto lights, this, this tile, style, all there has a tendency to have the, these things crack. These cap lugs. So you just always want to kind of look at it, make sure there's no, and it'd be like a little pencil line where you see a crack on the window. Be like a little pencil line. If you see that, and have it looked at. Okay, and then the other thing in health you want to be really concerned about is the fact to look up in here. When you do an oil change or have somebody do the oil change, in the balance, in the blast tube, you want to look up there and make sure there's no oil coming out of it. So we want to dry no oil. Right. The overall was pretty cheap of the alternator, comparatively. There's a little bit of oil leakage up here someplace. Might have to take a little bit to find. So you were saying the what? A little oil leakage. Yeah. You see up there. It's up on the, like the push rod tubes. Yeah. So um, it'll, it'll migrate too fast, too far. Okay. Um, one of these guys over here running the controls for us here in a And the heat muffler, every 100 hours digital inspection, every 500 hours take it out and check it, inspect it hydrostatically. That's where they put okay. apply PSI pressure internally with it, put it in a bucket of water and see that no bubbles come out of it. That'll prevent any kind of uh, carbon monoxide. It doesn't, but it'll make you aware if there is. Right. But it's to check and make sure it's not having other small leakage. Sometimes you'll have a seam leaking you can't see. You can get some, uh, you know, problems developing inside of there and you don't want that. Mm, you know, that's from the slip joint. Is that? I guess that clamps around there. Probably tell you if it's a slip joint, maybe? I'm not sure. Run too high.